morning. We are talking today about the choice and uh, uh, of models to use for a rain polar on off. And uh, let's say something beyond, but just a little bit something. And uh, the, 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 first, uh, the first talk is about uh, how we choose the model. Okay, another uh, issue is uh, are we really able to model uh, hydrology? And I uh, took this phrase that, that I changed. This is a famous book which is What is Life by, by Erwin Schrödinger, which is a famous physicist. And he wrote this book before we know that there was DNA about uh, what is uh, life for a physicist. And so, uh, I think that uh, the phrase is particularly appropriate also for hydrology, because hydrology actually is not just physics, it's also biophysics, it's also geochemistry now, is becoming a health science. Um, it's not the case that one of the major journals is called Hydrology and that System Sciences, because transition now is to go very beyond hydrology because water is uh, inside everything. So we have a, a challenge to describe properly the processes from one side and choosing the model from the other side. More or less the, um, the rationalized idea behind the choice of a model is this one, which is actually used to keep living, I guess. But uh, who reports is another one, is a uh, this, this guy, Butts, which is, uh, first that is a perceptual model. This perceptual model, uh, meaning you have an idea of what is going on on, on the landscape, and then you, you, you choose, the, the decide in which processes also are important to, for you. Then there is a conceptual model, which is, uh, say, decided the, the equation. Uh, we actually know that uh, not all the models uh, have exactly equations. I am kind of doing a strange thing. There are uh, different types of equations, let's say. There are statistical models. Now there are a lot of machine learning tools that mix with the uh, normal equations. But in the, at the very beginning, if you remind, and if you remember, uh, I, I say for us, models are equations. So we have to choose the form of the equation and which kind of equations. And uh, when you have decided these two things, you have obviously to write down the code that solves the, the, which is a, a, another business in a sense. Because you have to write in the proper manner. And when you write, the, 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 you have written the code, you have the code running, you have to set the parameters for make the real the model run for real cases. And that is another business again. So you, but you have to put all the, this stuff together because uh, uh, at the end your result depends on, on, on all of these choices. And if you don't have all these things in mind, you are, you are not creating a, a model in equilibrium. And then we have, uh, the validation of the model, meaning how much is useful for you, <laughs> translating in poor words. And uh, a new task is also you have to characterize and certain things. And not all models do this, but uh, now is, uh, is, is a necessity that uh, in these stages, in the 20s of the, the new millennium, we start to think up how much is the interval, confidence of interval in our predictions. Uh, because also it, this also have a practical, in, uh, pra, 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 practical effects on, on the practice so from engineers. Because uh, for instance now in some cases people expect that uh, the whole story of the hydrological prediction is uh, already given and exactly given. So they uh, wonder why sometimes uh, the results of the models uh, do, not, uh, do not predict 
for Otterly, what is going on. And from another and more practical point of view, uh, uh, fin not financial support is arriving because people are assuming that all this stuff is, was already solved in the past. And uh, this is uh, the r r rationalization of the process, but nobody acts like uh, uh, in, in that way, actually. All this stuff come uh, not in order, come together, come in a, in a different way. And the time to time, people ask to me, which, which is the best model? So uh, I have written a lot of my blog in my post, so I let you read about that, because I think uh, and there are the links, so you can click and, and look and take your time for doing that, not now. But uh, if I can summarize the result, this is the, the, the best model that doesn't exist. Doesn't exist because uh, models have uh, uh, natural constraints that uh, and nature is more rich, has um, more rich features that we are able to reproduce. In, uh, in any case, and uh, and also there is a scope when you do. There is a scale when you ap apply a model. So you have to be concerned about uh, at which scale you are spatial and temporal scale you are applying the model, and uh, use the appropriate model for your purposes. It depends on what you want to predict. And. Uh, Sometimes the scope of a hydrologist for coming from engineering is pretty limited to predict discharges of in a river, which is a task which is not solved yet, I would say, after more than 100 years that we do this. But it's easier than other tasks that we, you have to face in this decade. I can say, however, that see, if there is not the best model, some models are really the, the, the not good. And they are not good for various reasons, but usually uh, uh, there is this word in Gronsters that was uh, named first in a paper that I, I found, but uh, I I have to recover and to show to you this name. It means that sometimes the model are, they patch together different things in a way that there is not congruent. Because sometimes the, the, the thing comes, for instance, from other pieces of hydrology is a, a vast uh, field. So no, 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 no hydrologist, not even Rodriguez Turbin, knows the whole hydrology. He confesses to me. <laughs> he said, nobody knows the whole field of hydrology because there are so many features. So when, when one builds a, a model, touch together the thing he knows or she knows, and uh, sometimes the dispatching is not properly made. In reality, uh, there is this paper, which is a sociological paper, more or less, but is uh, regarding hydrology. It means that uh, legacy is more important than uh, the reproduction of, uh, of processes. So it's not the, this put out of your uh, horizon all the good procedures that were, uh, were uh, designed at the, in the first slide. Meaning that uh, if, you, if you are in an environment when you use GeoFrame, you, you, you don't ask if uh, GeoFrame is good or bad. You use GeoFrame. Or and the same is for top model. In this case, it's HPV. In top model, you see that HPV was, was created in England, it was used in, in the Netherlands, and in France, there is some guy, and so there are spots, and uh, the whole group of people around those, those spots use those models. Force the model to, to, in Padova, you have the model, uh, the Rinaldo model, which is, you know, 
and nobody asks, nobody dare to say, oh, this maybe is not working properly. So in reality, what it is this what we face when we get an order? We have some order and we have to make to, to make use of it. Uh, <coughs> there are several types of models. I don't do the history of and the classification of models. There are a couple of paper papers I'm not citing here actually, but uh, is uh, Burgers and Camp, for instance, 2004, where uh, the typologies of models are, uh, are uh, uh, examined and uh, you, you know then you can try your own classification. You have partial differential equations, you have ordinary differential equations, you have uh, statistical model and so on. But I, I don't like the other classification, so we skip that part. Uh, for what regards here, we uh, look at models like this, those ones, that uh, we, they are quite used in, uh, in our field. I, I am not justifying them, the use of uh, it's just uh, re uh, recording the fact that uh, we are using them. And this model, like uh, HEC HMS, DHI and MA, top, top copy, they are all kind of reservoir type of model. Where we have, uh, we think to the ideological process as a bunch of reservoir connected in some sense. These are called semi distributed models. And actually, uh, Ezio Dodini uh, wrote uh, a, a more than three decades ago, more or less, say, oh, we can call integral distributed model because uh, what we do we, is we, uh, we uh, take the space, we subdivide the space in parts, and that is already a choice. And uh, for each part, uh, we, give, we select uh, which process we want to describe. And we then, at that point, we give the equations, which is not exactly the same uh, rationalization that uh, we, we saw at the first, at the first things. And so the importance of uh, getting the right HRUs is, is uh, for the processes we, we want to explore is important. This choice has a mathematical consequence. The mathematical consequence is that uh, our tool for, uh, for, uh, for this model is to have uh, uh, ordinary differential equations. Our model is a set of ordinary differential equations where we have uh, the variation of the, the quantity, usually the storage of water in some compartments, which is x in this case. And uh, we have a, a tuple of, of inputs, a vector of, of inputs, and a vector of outputs. And the vector of inputs and the vector of outputs depends on parameters. And, uh, and also depends on initial conditions. So our system is a system of uh, this type of equations. And this makes of our model a dynamical system. Essentially, under this view, the mathematical translation of all the, our concept, uh, taking away all the frills, all, all the, is that we have a set of ordinary di differential equations, non-autonomous differential equations, meaning that the input is varying with time. Explicitly, I would say the system is open, meaning that we have insertion of mass from external sources or of energy when we deal with energy and parametric because we have parameters that we have to calibrate. That's a mathematical description of our yeah. we can we can say several things of what those equations are are doing but these are these are the mathematical facts. So here I just say that uh, uh, most of the model are, uh, that we see are doing this time. We have Larsen in Germany, GR4 in, in France, Preva in Switzerland, HPV in, the, in Scandinavia. 
same concept that I was telling you before. Here I also take a little bit more courage in showing a representation of, uh, of the model as a reservoir, but uh, I, I bet that from this, yeah, this, this is well, well done for the, for the average, but uh, can you, from this picture, uh, write the equations? I don't think you are able to do this. And then I will show you a, a method instead for representing this kind of model in a way that helps you to write the equations. Uh, even, even with this limitation that we are looking at the dynamical system, <coughs> Uh, in literature, there is a quite a, a, a large discussion about the structure of the model. One can say, oh, the structure of the model is that we are using nonlinear, non-autonomous, parametric, ordinary differential equations. But uh, actually, in writing the, 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 this equation, we are putting more than one equation to, for different processes. We are coping the processes in different manners. We have also, in, when we aggregate the area in HRU, uh, we have behind the idea that, that uh, we aggregate the processes that happens at the, the sub-grid scale in a certain way. For instance, one choice we are doing this day, we just choose randomly more or less a point inside the, the HLU and evaluate all the quantities in that point and we think that the, that point is a representative of the, the hydrology of the HLU. This is one choice but we could also operate in different ways, for instance examining several points inside the, the, the HLU, doing the average and then using the average for instance, which in some cases is more reasonable. And also we have interpretation of the phenomena that are inside, which are connected with vegetation, geology, and ecology in our cases. Uh, with our geoframe new age, which is the part that, of geoframe that uh, direct, does re uh, rainfall or not, we, uh, we made some choices, uh, which is London model set of these, but all the, the, the rest of the choices uh, remain very open. We can uh, select se several processes to, to put together. Here you see there is a, a, a map that I, uh, I have stolen from Fabrizio Pedicia. And even in this case, there is a vast recent liter literature. Uh, Fabrizio is one of the, of the guys that actually working on, on, on this topic and say even if we have our system of reservoir mm. when we have to divide it with the catchment in parts and this is already a choice and we say we can uh, associate with each different HRU a different number of reservoirs depending on which we think are the processes acting there if the hydrology is simple or more complicated. I invite you to, to read the paper, for instance this one, which is pretty, it's very well written, and give you the ideas about how there is, can be a selection even inside of this, of this model. And uh, they say, oh, you should look at this, not stop at this phase, Observe if you can change the structure, meaning changing the number of equations and the type of equations sometimes for each HLU. You see if you have results, then see how the parameters are done, and then also analyze if there are connections between the parameters in the HLU close by. But that is better that you read by yourself. With our geoframe system, uh, we uh, aim to do a system that we, which was flexible enough to, to do all this stuff that I am saying. 
even if you will see here just an application, uh, a particular application, because you have to learn the part. And uh, uh, with the, the number of equations, the interaction between places, the, the fluxes between places, this is actually selecting the structure of your model. And uh, finally, evaluating the parameters that are suitable. So more or less, uh, uh, this is the, the, these are the main arguments. So we are not, this, uh, the other, other choices can be we start with the different discretization of the space. We think that the processes has to be described with partial differential equations. So it's a completely another topic, another map. So assume that we are in the field. We are in the field, and what is that? Is a coral. You say worms, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you are in the field, or you are, uh, let's say, we, we are we able to do some perceptual model of, of, our, of our system? You are in the field. So, for instance, what happens in the field? You say, oh, this catchment for mythology, for what we see, for what uh, we have a soft information, but uh, it looks like that is made by two sharply <coughs> distinct uh, things. One is a, a bedrock on, on, and uh, in more or less impermeable, and the other is a, a soil that makes some storage. How can I represent a model like this one? Because uh, my goal is to, to translate into equation. No equation, no model. No things, no party. <laughs> you have to think. No equation, no party. So I say, there is one storage. Let's draw, let's draw one storage. And this is the soil storage, shallow subsurface or quick flow. Obviously, we have this concept behind. And we can SU like uh, upper. So we say there is a contrasting thing, and there is also a lower storage. So we have another storage there. How they are connected? Okay, that's another thing. The, the surface storage and the subsurface storage uh, give outflows, and these outflows goes into the surface water, and I just sum the two in a third storage, and here I just count the storage, we have no delay, for this I can also add delays or other things, but for the moment we are not taking care of it. At this hour there is someone who always drilling, I don't know, in this, in this thing. So we have three storage. Let's take the first storage, is the upper, storage, we should have some inputs on this storage, which inputs can get precipitation, normal. We have also a, lo a lower flux, which is hot, hot L, that goes to the uh, deeper storage, otherwise we don't know how the deeper storage get water. Maybe can get water, can get water directly without passing through the, through the upper storage, but this is, uh, yeah. then the storage has, uh, the upper storage has not a physical meaning, as a more concept, uh, is more conceptual. We have also have two other outputs. One is going to uh, evapotranspiration, where they put also the S, and the other one is that uh, we have a check L, which is the a flux towards, to, uh, to, towards surface water. Uh, this is, uh, uh, there are uh, some black dots, meaning the black, I am, I am going to measure the black dots. I know the black dots. We have a gauge that measures precipitation and a gauge that measures this flux here, okay? So 
So in the my problem, those are not variables, are measured quantities or external quantities. So this represents exactly a, a water budget because uh, the derivative of the of the S, which is the ball, <laughs> one ball, one equation. Now I'm revealing the things. And this call in this uh, thing, uh, these are called places. These are these are places. These are transitions. Okay, the variation of the storage in time, which is meaning the variation of the quantity inside the ball, is what is going in. The, the herald is been uh, went around the ball, but there is an error there going in. So positive plus pt precipitation minus all the other ones that are going out. And this is the water budget of this equation. So there is a perfect correspondence from here to here. And so now we go to the lower storage. What does the lower storage? So the lower storage take the hot hell from the upper storage and put down QL that is also measured and actually goes on the surface water. And, and we have also percolation here. We wrote a paper on this stuff anyway. But the whole system then is like this one. Three balls and uh, three six fluxes. Two equations, one equation, every each ball. Actually, this system that looks like so simple is pretty is pretty uh, widely present in literature. For instance, in this paper by Jim Kirchner, and the equation of the system are those ones over there. So you are not a mathematician; you just start. Uh, painting balls and, uh, and squares, and you get your uh, mathematics done by the computer. No, it's not the computer in this case, but you have the mathematics work it out. You, someone of you will say, okay, <laughs> but you actually don't know the form of the fluxes. That's true. We have to specify the form of the fluxes, and the form of the fluxes obviously is part of the structure of our, of our model. So we have to say, oh, also we have to uh, give a name to the quantities. And here we have a dictionary for the things, which is simply a list of the name with the name of the unit and the type fluxes of a state variable in terms of a dyna dynamical process. And uh, we can also have a a table of expression in which to each of the fluxes we give a mathematical expression. So we say evapotranspiration is a function of net radiation, the velocity of wind, the atmospheric demand, the temperature of air, and the roughness of the system. And it remain not clarified yet, but it's not useful in this context. Instead, we, we give formulas, exact formulas, which is in terms of the the other state variable S, uh, check L, and the other thing for each one of the discharges. How we did this one? Yeah, we, we, we tried. We tried, but the choice, we have not many type of choice. These are no linear systems. So if we can substitute these terms here, inside the previous equation and obtain the, fu the full form of the equation. So that our equation is completely described in this system and there is no doubt on how to do it. Now go back at the, at the uh, reservoirs that I put uh, on the previous slide and try to do the same exercise on those, on those reservoirs. Well, another thing is that the system here has a topology, which is this one. This is not important for what I am saying today, but maybe I will say you something. I have to agree with uh, Maria Laura on that. 
this is the, the topology of, of our system, meaning there are the, the set of connections and the, that establish the structure of our model, which is hidden. The structure of this model actually is useful also for uh, estimate, for instance, the tracer transport. transport. It, it, it is intuitively to you that uh, if this is the way the water moves around the system, uh, the, the travel time, for instance, the time that water stays into the system is some kind of connected to this topology. And there is actually a way to derive pre precisely the, the, the travel time, for instance, and the concentration of pollutants transported in this system. Obviously, if our system is a system that can do and it can be divided in compartments. And this is obviously also a very general thing, because if you have a system like this one, in, in our boats, instead of having water, so you can have chemicals, and the, the equation maybe is described in some part of our body. You know. So the, the schematization is a uh, very general, we call extended petri net because petri nets are this kind of a structure that uh, actually is uh, known since since the 60s, but it was never applied to hydrology. Here you have uh, the main object in the petri net system: a uh, place transition, and we have also controller. I will show you what the controller is, in. and various type of arcs and various type of dots for saying what is going on. Here you have the system, for instance, this is a more complete, complete models, model. It is actually HPV, the, uh, the one that we saw before. Here you have also three colors. The color stays for the, the various type of uh, physical compartment. You say a pink, it is not pink in the ideology, but Someone, with, someone of you is colorblind? No. <coughs> uh, one of our. Yeah, is a colorblind. Is a colorblind. It should be, but there is the yellow that is a kind of altering the color. So, they, yeah. Because of what I ask, if someone of you is colorblind, is he able to distinguish the colors? Okay. So, uh, the pink. The pink here is uh, there's no there's no compartment. Here it is I a little bit more complicated than the other one because you can see that there is a loop. So from the point of view of the solution of the system, it has to be solved simultaneously, while the other has to be solved can be solved separately, each piece each piece. The yellow is the soil and the and the blue are groundwater and surface water. And uh, you see that HPV is uh, mostly a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ordinary <coughs> pressure equations. And various fl fluxes combined of a few. Uh, the previous description of the system that I gave you is not enough to describe the really the, the, the whole the whole behavior or at least is able to it allows us to write the proper equations. However, however the graph is not representing the causal structure of the system uh, properly because uh, inside for instance M is the melting part of the snow here. The melting part of the snow depends also on temperature, which is not, uh, and the, the influence that temperature has, has on M is just in altering some of the parameters. So it's not causing a flux like this one, but it's a, a constraint to the way that the fluxes are given. When I give the expression of the flux, so obviously I put inside the dependence on temperature. So in the formula, for sure, there is already a temperature. But graphically, to have also the graphical meaning, 
I put that thing, that, that triangle, okay, it, it is a, the temperature is a controller of the refreezing and the melting in this case. And also of evapotranspiration and also of precipitation. In this case, you see you have a new causal relationship that forms inside the model, and this can be actually interesting for who is analyzing the system because the, the causal relations uh, has effects on uh, which are the correlation that you obtain between various data that appear on the flux. So I am kind of giving you a hint, a hint on that uh, the topological structure of the fluxes, fluxes when is properly represented can help you understanding which color is caused by, by what, and so on. This is another system that actually was supposed to be very simple. It was supposed to, in the original drawing to be of three equations, two equations, and instead there are many others that were hidden inside, and, uh, and this is the fuller, another fuller representation of the model. But if you want to do an exercise, Try to write the, the mass conservation equations for this system just for, the, for from the figure. The other thing is that uh, I said at the beginning that uh, we want to go to earth system sciences, go beyond hydrology. And actually, yesterday I showed you that hydrology is very well affected by evapotranspiration and the uh, evapotranspiration is a uh, part of the energy budget. To solve evapotranspiration, you have to solve, at the same time, the water budget and the energy budget. So, with the same system, here there is a simpler system, just one board on the side, here on the left side, which is one board, we have precipitation, this is called J now, and go evapotranspiration out and just a QG and discharge going down here. This is the SG equal to, the SG to the, uh, over the T equal J minus QG minus the T. That's the equation. And uh, at this, uh, this system here corresponds <coughs> to another system, another type of equation on energy budget. It's always the same topology. We have done Okay, it's always the same topology up to a point. Because you have one ball, and we have here UG, which is the internal energy. And the internal energy is the budget that we have, and we have the contribution of the energy that comes from movement of the mass. Yesterday, I told you, the UM where we move mass, we move the energy, so we have energy coming in with precipitation J, energy coming out with the trans evapotranspiration in T, and the energy coming out also with percolation QG. Because if the temperature of water percolating is a, a different temperature of the one that is going, going to the other side, is bringing, bringing away heat. But in the energy budget, we have some also other two other terms, which are the radiation R and the and the sensible heat uh, and the sensible irritation. These two systems are actually coupled. You have some variables that are actually the same variable, even if I put uh, the underline here to say that they are the same quantity, but we have to translate in the proper uh, budget uh, um, quantity, which is a uh, way to translate the mass in the correspondent energy and that is done by multiplying by the entities. So in this case we are, I am representing a system with two equations, two balls, two equations, but, what, but the equations are relating to the same spatial place and one is the energy budget and the other is the water budget. Here there, is a, there are some influence, for instance, I say the light, the area index, is affecting several things, is affecting the, the incoming radiation, is affecting 
Well, why is it affecting the incoming radiation? This is not can, can looks not uh, not uh, intuitive, but it, we have because it's causing the albedo, it's variating the albedo. So if we have the net incoming radiation, is the, the budget between the uh, downwelling and upwelling short wave radiation, and uh, and then we have also the long wave going back. And, um, and so for the KS. In reality, you have a, a basin like this one. This are, uh, is a, more or less an illustration of the work you already did. It's the separation of a catchment in H and U's. Uh, here they are called A1, A2, A2, A5. And we have the channels inside. And these channels also can be, look, can be seen as uh, a ball. So the representation of this uh, catchment in terms of interaction can be that in each of the interact, in each of the system we can have, I put the black circle here to say that in each one of these one, we have to plug a, a system like this, or like this, or like this, over here, this is a Compose uh, a system which is composed of systems, and we have inputs, and they are connected through the river network. And in the river network, also we have also the transport of river. Net so we have a border for SC4, for instance, which is a board that describes how the, uh, the the channel four. What it, uh, also the channel four is a storage. So we accumulate water there, and then water is moved over there. So, so this is the compound system here. You can think it, in each of these walls, actually, you could see in it, you should see in coming out of vertical one of the previous, of the previous system of balls. And that is what uh, the geoframe you made is about. So, and now we will see an example of it. So let's start with the snow, uh, the snow reservoir. 
which solves uh, we have two places. So you know that we have two different uh, two uh, orders, so two ordinary differential equation. One uh, is for the liquid water, water, and the other one is for the ice, ice water, and is able to simulate the melting discharge and uh, the snow water equivalent. So the melting discharge, uh, so you have snow when, uh, of course, uh, you are melting discharge when there is snow, otherwise you have uh, rainfall. All the equations uh, and uh, the meaning of the terms uh, are uh, yeah, reported in the, in the tables. Uh, so once you uh, compute the melting discharge, then these reservoirs are connected to the canopy reservoir. So you, have, you can see that you have an input to the melting discharge, so you are able to identify <coughs> immediately the input because you have the arrows that are telling you that is what, what is going inside your place. And then you have two outputs, which are the, the true form and uh, the above transpiration from the actually to be the, the transpiration <laughs> after the, the, the lesson of yesterday. So this is a, a simplified uh, version of the, of the Luther model. Uh, and uh, again, the, 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 the terms uh, are specified in the, in the tables uh, and also the equations. In this case, what we are simulating uh, is uh, the, the layer of water that which is uh, about the, the, the canopy. So we are not going to simulate what is going on inside the canopy. So the output uh, is uh, the, the true fall, uh, which is uh, actually composed by uh, the, the drainage, so what is uh, passing directly to the, the canopy. And then uh, uh, the, the, the true fall actually is the sum of these two terms. So the maximum discharge one minus P and the drainage. This is the slide that I showed you yesterday <coughs> for, the, for the lie, the lip area index. And uh, okay, so I will skip it. And then, uh, of course, also in this case, if you don't have a uh, canopy, uh, the model is able to uh, automatically that doesn't consider the, the canopy and the, the mapping discharge or the rain is going directly on the zone. So we have this good zone reservoir. Again, you, you see that there is just one differential equation. So you have the variation of the storage in the root zone reservoir is equal to the input term, which is uh, the true fall, actually multiplied by this alpha coefficient. You will see what uh, this alpha means in a bit. And the outputs are the evapotranspiration from the root zone and uh, this term, uh, which is the, the, the recharge term of the groundwater. So this uh, zone reservoir is directly connected to the groundwater. Uh, here you can see a, a strange arrow, which has uh, uh, another small circle. This means that you can simulate the recharge term uh, with the nonlinear reservoir. So when you see that there is an arrow with a dot, it means that uh, there is a non-linear reservoir. Of course, if you put the exponent of the linear reservoir equal to one, you have the linear reservoir. <laughs> easy, easy. Um, this alpha, okay, this alpha is a partitioning coefficient between uh, uh, the root zone and uh, the runoff component. So, uh, according to uh, the, the equation proposed uh, by Zhao and uh, implemented also in any model, which is a famous model from Europe, uh, you are able to, uh, to compute this alpha according to the saturation of the, the saturation view of the zone. And so you know that above this uh, curve, well, the part, uh, one part is alpha is going to the, the runoff directly to the runoff, and the other one is dictating the, to the radio. <coughs> so there is the runoff uh, reservoir, which is uh, again you can simulate it using a nonlinear reservoir, or there are two uh, formulations here. Uh, you can simulate it through uh, the classical nonlinear reservoir, like this. so you have an exponent and a coefficient where the input are alpha times the true fall, 
and minus uh, the runoff, uh, the discharge generated for the runoff, uh, from the runoff. Or uh, we have also the simplified formulation for, uh, for the, the runoff, uh, which uh, we are considering a linear reservoir where the coefficient is actually a function of the area of the, the subbasin multiplied by a k coefficient. Why we have this, uh, this second formulation? Because uh, we use this formulation for the case study of Vasilvata. I told you yesterday that uh, we worked on for the civil collection of Basilicata for the uh, real time uh, real time forecast of discharges, and we were trying to to find a simplified formulation uh, which was a function of known terms so the area of the subbasin in order to uh, obtain uh, uh, reliable estimates. So you have the two choices. And finally, we have uh, the, the groundwater reservoir, where the, the, the input uh, is the recharge, the recharge term from the zone, while the output uh, is the, the groundwater, sorry, the discharge from the groundwater. Uh, again, you can see the arrow with the dot, so you, we know that there is a nonlinear reservoir, so it is simulated by a nonlinear reservoir, where the, in this case the coefficient is uh, named e and uh, the exponent is f. So the total discharge, which was uh, uh, schematized by that, uh, dashed, uh, that dashed circle, is uh, the sum from the contributes from the groundwater and from the, the runoff. Again, uh, since they are uh, almost all nonlinear reservoirs, you can imagine uh, to uh, connect more reservoirs. So, for example, if, if you want to simulate the subsurface flow, you can put another uh, another uh, linear or nonlinear reservoir as you prefer. Or if you want to simulate your own model, you can put in cascade how many reservoirs. Uh, and this is easily done uh, because we will see through the connection in the same file you, are, you, you have just simply to connect the input to in the output. So thanks to this schematization you are able immediately to understand which are the inputs and, and the outputs and, and then play with the connections within your, uh, your same file. So uh, as I said, what we simulate for each uh, which are you as a part of the each subbasin depends on your discretization of the of the basin. Uh, for example, this is another uh, river for, uh, from uh, Basilicata case study. Um, you can uh, you can uh, then you have to connect uh, all these uh, uh, reservoirs uh, in the special uh, in, your, in the special uh, domain. So. Uh, in this case, each of these points, uh, places, let's call it with this <laughs> the name, uh, these places are uh, the, the, the embedded reservoir model. So in each of these places, you are solving all the, the, the equations that I show you. And then you have to connect, uh, you, have, you have to connect them. How? We implemented the, 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 masking, um, the masking method. So the, the discharge generated from the future you then is to do along the network till the closure section, that in this case is here in three, is the closure section. And you can see also here from this that is the closure section. And then uh, uh, you obtain the discharge, the total discharge of your closure. Here we are also imaging that uh, we have a dam because uh, in the rivers and in, uh, in uh, complicated, really complicated environments, usually there are more dams, big dams or hydraulic infrastructures like dams. We implemented a simple model for dams. And uh, of course we are doing an approximation in which we are uh, simply considered that so the uh, HRU2 is, uh, is the dam. So we are uh, simply changing the, the subbasin with the dam. And here, so we have the general representation of all the bits uh, the scheme. 
So as, as regards the, the equation of the, the dam and the masking dam, the masking dam method. So the second one is the masking dam equation, really, really famous equation, which is uh, just a, a balance between the channel you are, uh, you are considering between the, the input and the output of the, of the channel. And uh, we have implemented this really simplified model of the dams, in which uh, you are actually in the solving the mode. Uh, differential equation, another uh, differential equation. In this case, uh, the variable is not uh, the storage, but it's uh, the height, the height uh, within the dam. So you are modeling the variation of the height within the, the dam. Therefore, you have to uh, divide by the area, of course, which is, uh, of course, a function of the, of the stage within the dam. Mm, the, the equations are reported here in the in the tables, uh, but what you are considering are basically the inputs uh, and the outputs. And the outputs are, for example, uh, the 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 spillways, uh, the restitutions. Uh, so what we know that is going out from the dam, where the inputs are the inputs from uh, from uh, up from upstream. And uh, another uh, simplification is that we are not considering. Uh, the precipitation whether it's arriving on the surface of the dam is a simplification that is usually done in this uh, in this modeling. <coughs> this is uh, the bibliography where you can find all the most of the question where uh, of the of the model. And then uh, we will uh, start with uh, the first uh, the first part of this uh, exercise, uh, in which we are going to see one to five, so for the, 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 the node one, how the connections of the servers is made within the file. And then we can start to play a little bit <laughs> with the parameters uh, and see how the different components of the charge are uh, changing. So if you don't have uh, questions or you have questions, please tell me now, otherwise we can go there.